Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at the Bunker Jeddah, a private garage here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia with some very nice cars around, but one in particular that we're going to be checking out, the Mercedes-Benz CLK 63 Black Series. Now with my Black Series obsession, having three of them in the Shmi mobiles, believe it or not, I've never driven the CLK Black Series. I have been lucky to be behind the wheel of the CLK DTM, but today we're gonna to take this out for a drive to experience it and think about whether one of them should join the garage in the future. Now here, there are some very nice cars. The one of 100 Viper GTSRs, the 991.2 Speedster, we've got the GT2 RS, we've got the R34 GTR water collection. But we're gonna take a full look at this and then take it out for a drive here on the roads of Jeddah to see what the CLK Black is like, and whether I should be thinking about one in the future. I'd like to start with a quick thank you to the owner of the Bunker Jetta for making it possible to come and take a look and also to my friend Cars Close By for the introduction. But we're here to check out this, the Mercedes-Benz CLK 63 Black Series, a car that absolutely intrigues me, having over the last year or two added the three most recent Black Series models to my collection, the SLS, then the C63, and then more recently the GT Black Series. The CLK is one that I think is so iconic and perhaps needs to happen in the future. It was the second model to wear the Black Series badge. The SLK 55 had kicked things off and the SL65 came after this, but perhaps this was the one that made people really understand what it was about. Out. This now familiar formula of making it more hardcore, more dynamic, more aggressive, the wider arches, the lower setup, the new wheels, more power from the engine. In this case, the CLK took the CLK 63's M156 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8, turned it up about 25 horsepower. We've now got 507. It stripped out the interior. Come have a quick look at this. We've got the bucket seats. We've got lots of carbon fiber, for example, for the door cards those bucket seats and the rear seat delete. You won't be getting passengers comfortably back there at all to save some weight. As I said, a formula that we now know from the more recent models, we've got a lip spoiler sitting on the back, and I believe this is going to sound really quite good as well. So it's a car that fascinates me with the limited numbers. They are quickly appreciating, as so many collectible cars are in the current market. But let's have a very quick look at what else we have here at the moment to pick out a couple of cars. We've got the Porsche 911 GT2 RS Visac package. We've got the Nissan R34 GTR, absolutely spot on number plates being worn on that. If we come over to this side, I want to touch on this Viper for a moment, the GTS-R, which was the final edition ACR. They only made a hundred of them in this livery to commemorate the 1997 FIA GT2 championship winning Viper. So that is very, very rare, pretty spectacular. We also have the 991.2 Speedster, absolute del delivery mileage spec, but of course we're here for this. And I want to show you the engine of this as well before we're gonna get it started in just a moment. So bear with me, let's get this popped open. We have seen a few CLK Black Series on the channel recently on the Black Series tour. We stopped by at Mechatronic and also at the home of AMG in Falterback. If we open this up though, we have that lovely M156 power plant with the one man, one engine plaque, the person who was responsible for assembling this particular engine at the plant in Falterback in Germany. Always looks fantastic. Sitting up front, very AMG defining of an era. We also have here, by the way, some visiting cars the Pista, GT4, Turbo S, I think a resident at the Bunker Jeddah. So what's going to be left then is to get this started, pull it out and go for a drive to experience for the first time the CLK Black Series and think a little bit more about it. It's time for us to have a listen to the startup. Oh yes, it sounds quite different to the C63 and the SLS despite being based on effectively the same engine. Well, let's get this pulled outside. This sounds fantastic. Burbling away in the garage. Those chrome multi-spoke wheels as well. Just look the part, they suit it very, very well. All right, let's get ready to head out. Here I am then, driving in Saudi Arabia, the first time I have ever driven here. I'm out in Jeddah for the inaugural Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, the first Formula One race ever to be held here in the country, which is spectacularly set up out on the Corniche. But we are, of course, driving in the CLK 63 Black Series. This is all about the car. This is all about what is this like? And at the moment, I'm driving with the gearbox in sport. You've got the seven-speed auto. You can change it between sport, manual, 
or comfort. So you can go into comfort. That's just the gearbox settings effectively, um, making things slightly smoother. I'm probably going to pop it into manual for the time being, just downshift a little bit because who doesn't want to hear this engine sound? What a noise. What an absolutely beautiful noise. I tell you what, I've got a little bit used to the CLK platform with the supercharged engine, with the DTM engine, which is so very different. It might be a little bit more powerful, but there's something about this massive naturally aspirated lump. There's something just so distinctly special about it. And we're following cars close by, by the way, in the S8 up in front at the moment, in an Audi exclusive paint color as we head around here. Oh, listen to that. It makes, again, a different noise to the C63 and to the SLS, and that's probably something that you wouldn't necessarily consider. They're all basically the same, the M156 and the C63 and the CLK, the M159 and the SLS, but they make very, very different sounds. Just got to watch out for what the traffic here gets up to. Lanes are a little bit sporadic and spontaneous at times. <laughs> Keeping my concentration about me. But it feels, as you would expect, like the more dynamic, more exciting version of its base car. Now, I've not driven the regular CLK 63, so I can't make a direct comparison. I can say that when I was younger, my mother had a CLK, a CLK Cabriolet. I remember it very, very, very well. Um, so, so I suppose there would be some kind of connection there to one of these one day. Oh, listen to that. And for an auto box that's now 13 years or so old, battery shifts quite nicely. Sounds good, it feels good, and this particular example actually feels really well together. I'm going to try and understand the speed limit signs and road rules that are definitely not written in English. Um, I have done a bit of research as to what the speed limit numbers look like. This is a 100k road, um, and I've learned my 80 and my 70 and things like that. But obviously this is an area where we are at the moment that's been heavily under construction to put everything together for the Corniche for Formula One to arrive here in town. And obviously drive, if you hold it, by the way, if you hold the shift paddle. Um, ah, no, because I've got it forced into manual. If you've gone into manual when you're in sport, if you hold the shift paddle, it will go back into auto. But this is very much learning as we go. Drop it into third gear. Oh, 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 that was quite close over the lines. I love that. I love the sound that this makes. So inside, this is the thing, it's got all the creature comforts of the CLK of this era, right? A digital screen in front of you, and the basic sense as opposed to a full LED dashboard. You've got your navigation system, all the climate controls and comfort and music, and that side of it is all in here. But what I like so much about the Black Series models is that they take the regular cars and they just make them that bit more exciting. They're limited, they're rare, and you know, to have only made 700 of a car based on a CLK is actually a very exclusive number. Yes, the CLK DTM is massively more so. There are only 100 coupes and 80 convertibles, very, very few of those. And in right-hand drive models for the UK market, tiny numbers of both, very, very tiny numbers of both. So obviously not cars that you see on a particularly regular basis, but cars that can be driven, cars that aren't too absurd to try and maintain and manage and to keep on the roads and that's one of the things that I think we're going to look at more and more as time goes by is you know that these engines there are lots of parts around for them they're readily available <laughs> I love that feel of the power it's there instantly with the torque and it just keeps delivering and keeps delivering but I was saying that it would be quite easy to keep something like this running it's a Mercedes it's an engine that there are lots of parts and spares available for and it's it's kind of good to go as we cruise up here. As it happens here, we have a 911 Turbo, looking very nice in the blue. 991.1 generation of that. The thing with this car is obviously it's prior to the era of dual clutch gearboxes, but for an auto, it's actually pretty decent. You're not left waiting forever for it to shift. And it makes some very nice snaps on the changes as well. <laughs> it's going to lower the window a touch. We've got a roundabout here. And then hopefully a nice acceleration out the other side of it. That S S8 also happens to sound pretty good. <laughs> Goodness, what 
watch out. Head out this way. Put the wheels straight. Yeah, plenty of poke. Sounds amazing. Obviously, these are fairly famously quite tail happy. You've got all the weight over the front, you've got a lot of power to the rear. It would have no problems slipping and sliding around if that's what you want it to do. This is totally unreal to me. We're actually right by the sea here, the Red Sea, or at least a part of it that comes inland with some yachts and some very nice houses. This is cool. Bit of sightseeing as we go, learning <laughs> about this area of Saudi Arabia. First time driving a car in the country and it's a CLK 63 Black Series. I would say that's pretty cool. I'm glad the roads are fairly empty as well. This is quite nice, the way this road flows back and forth. Gives a bit more sense of the car. This is the thing, right? It kind of has to be the next, let's say, classic addition to the garage, or modern classic, or, you know, recent retro car. That's the way, I think I want to head a little bit. Obviously I've got a few brand new modern cars in order and I always like ordering a new car. But it's one of the reasons for purchasing the SLS and the C, is to build a bit of a collection around these things. And this would fit so well with those. It will just come down to color because these weren't really available in very many colors. And I don't know what I would choose. Black one, not really me. White one, there are some red ones around, but not very many and they carry a massive premium. Um, and silver, of course, the main Mercedes color. Oh, this is cool. Nice place to be. Maybe we can pull up for a minute. Pulled over for a second with the car in the sunshine, boiling hot today, as you'd probably expect. A stunning place, though. Have a look here. And also, that is the construction of the Jeddah Tower, the world's first one kilometer tall tower over towards the other side. But this is just a glorious car to drive, honestly. Enjoying it an awful lot today. CLK 63 Black Series. Look at those arches. Look at this as well, the carbon fiber louvres that you have down on the front bumper. Obviously the familiar CLK shape with those iconic headlights, but this ridiculously wide arch, like on the C63 Black Series, these openings that sit just behind the 6.3 badge. It's a historical thing, hence the 6.2 liter engine, but 6.3 badging that these cars wear around them. Anyway, I think we should probably hop back in and continue the drive. We're back underway. I have had to turn the air conditioning up a lot because I am far too hot being a Brit here in the Middle East. But yeah, so far loving it. That was the noise of the seatbelt being retracted. It has those arms that feed it to you to make life that little bit easier. What I was saying right about it being based on the CLK. And this is what I've always loved. These cars where it's possible to have a more regular version but also to have this much more track focused, honed in equivalent. And I'm really fascinated by how different this is to the DTM because of the engine. Of course, performance wise, it feels roughly the same kind of league, let's say, because I haven't driven a DTM for a year or two, but sound and the delivery of the power is obviously very different not having that supercharged engine, the likes of which you find in the SLR, for example, this being the engine that we find in the SLS but a big, massive, powerful, angry, noisy lump. So let's go into manual again. The roundabouts here have confusing priorities as to who technically goes in which order, but I'm just rolling with it, working out what I do as I go. It rides well as well. It's not uncomfortable, it's not particularly firm or unpleasant and it sounds brilliant it just sounds absolutely oh supra a90 supra went the other way sounds absolutely fantastic there are also plenty of things that are a little bit weird about this car for example i am sat to the left of the steering wheel the bucket seat is not perfectly aligned to the wheel and the pedals there is nowhere for the arm to go just straight into a carbon fiber door panel but these are things that you don't really care about when you're enjoying the drive you just crack on with it and enjoy the car for what it is <laughs> just with a massive smile on your face because that's what this is about right 
Oh, awesome machine. Pulled over for a moment, stepped out of the car. It is far too hot for me, so I'm staying in here just for the moment. But let me show you a little bit more inside the CLK Black Series. The steering wheel is actually quite cool, very race inspired I feel with the central part flat bottomed obviously nice grips this generation of the infotainment and controls but still with a nice looking dashboard you've got the carbon fiber uh, surrounding the instrument panels I do think this looks really nice with the AMG badging embossed on that door card but otherwise the full level of equipment all the carbon trim through the center bit of storage in the armrest your selector for the gearbox for the auto box um, pop it in neutral for a second pop open the door and it does sound epic yes really very very nice i'm gonna pop it back into park but yeah this is the clk black series if i switched off and brave the outside for just a moment let me climb out of here and see if i can handle it you've got the foot handbrake down there yeah what a place what a car to be driving an experience to get behind the wheel of this out here looking really very very nice i think that this is something that has to happen at some point in the future and i wouldn't say that if i didn't think it was probably going to happen so watch this space down the line not necessarily in the next month or two but like with the c63 i promised it one day it happened one day and there is now a c63 black series in the shmi mobiles the question will be what will the spec and options and configuration look like with the rest of the lineup I have to say out here this works pretty well the white with the chrome wheels the silver for the chrome around the grill and the various other elements so i'd like to say again a huge thanks to the owner of the car the collection the bunker jetta for the opportunity to drive this and also to cars close up for the introduction to set up taking it out for a run today here in jeddah for now back to the saudi arabian gp the grand prix weekend but thank you very much for watching guys do let me know your thoughts should a CLK 63 Black Series join the Shmi Mobiles? I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!